and his pocket. And he said, By Allah, if I were to live for as long as it, eat, as it takes to eat these dates, it will be too long of a life. <laughs> yeah, to live after this statement will be a long life huh? if I live. What a great man. So he went onto the battlefield. He threw the dates away. He threw the dates away. He ran to a paradise as well as heaven's earth. He smelled the fragrance of paradise as he's fighting vigorously the enemy until he was slaughtered for the sake, that, for the sake of the one who created slaughter. Allahu Akbar. And thus, and thus, he will, inshallah ta'ala, go to paradise. And very easily did they defeat the people of infidelity, the people of idolatry, the people of impurity. Twenty-four of their war lords, their generals, were slain. Twenty-four of their main pillars of Quraysh were slain, were slaughtered. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded that all of these warlords be thrown into a well. And thus he even communicated with them saying, Do you now see that which you lied? Do you now see that which you be lied? He spoke to them. And Umar ibn Khattab said, How can you speak to people who are dead? What are you doing? He goes, Wallahi, they hear better than you do. Wallahi, they hear better than you do, but you cannot comprehend that. This was in the month, the blessed month of Ramadan, the second year after the migration, the battle, the great battle of Badr. As in the battle of Badr, the sacred month of Ramadan, Likewise, was the time that the Almighty Lord blessed the believers with their greatest victory ever. In the eighth year after the migration, He blessed them with what? He delivered the sacred city of Mecca, it's just like on a silver platter. He delivered the sacred city of Mecca to the believers without any bloodshed without any resistance. And with this victory, brothers and sisters, the Almighty Lord rescued this sacred, noble city from the yoke of filth, of shirk, association, and made it an Islamic city for eternal life. Thus, the Islamic way of life was declared openly and the idols were smashed. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Mustafa, he entered Mecca, on his horse riding and as soon as he entered Mecca the first thing that he did was go to the Kaaba he performed tawaf around the Kaaba on his horse on his horse and as it's mentioned in Bukhari there was approximately 360 idols around and in the Kaaba so as he was doing tawaf he had his sword and with his sword he was pulling pushing and pulling the idols while reciting a beautiful verse, وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقَّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُوقًا Indeed, the truth has come. At last, it's come. It's going to come, eventually. And falsehood has perished. And look at this last bit of it. For falsehood by nature, Wallahi, is bound to perish. Put that in your mind. This last part of it. For falsehood by nature is what? Memorize it! For falsehood by nature is bound to perish. Allah. And I think you understand what I'm trying to refer to. Falsehood by nature, ya bush, is bound to perish. <laughs> is bound to perish. How long would you live for? You are bound to perish. How much strategies and conspiracies against the Muslims are you doing? It's bound to perish. Ya bush, ya forest, ya bala, ya tla, ya khabif, ya hawad. All of you, you are all bound. Ya sharan, ya khanzir. You are all bound to perish. Wallahi, all of you. All of you are bound to perish. All of you. Thus, this is insha'Allah indefinitely. Ala tahqiq, wala ta'liq. And then he entered the Kaaba. 
And he destroyed, this is Muhammad Sallam, he destroyed all the pictures in it. Thus he prayed two rak'at in the Kaaba, and he went to each corner of the Kaaba declaring, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. And then he stood on the door of the Kaaba, again, La ilaha illallah. You know, he's, he's confronting over a hundred thousand companions now. La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah. له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. There is no god worthy of worship except Allah Taala. He is his sovereignty. To him belongs all praise, and he is able to do all things. And then he recited, يا أيها الناس إن خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعرفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم. O people, we have created you from a male and a female. And have made you into people and tribes in order for you to know each other, to understand each other. And the most noble, the best of you are those who are God fearing, are those who are God conscious, are those who are righteous in the sight of the Almighty Lord. What a beautiful statement. The most noble in the sight of the Almighty Lord. This was the statement of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaking the revelation that was sent to him at that time that the most noble in the sight of Allah Ta'ala are not those who own mansions, are not those who own buildings, are not those who own car yards, who own properties and assets, are those who are most righteous, are those who are most God-fearing. Wallahi, he could be the poorest person on the earth, but he could be the most righteous person on the earth. And in the sight of the Almighty Lord, he is better than all creation. All creation. It's not how much you got in your wallet, it's what you've got in here. With application. And thus, this was the time of the conquest of Mecca in the eighth year after the migration. So now it was supposed to be an open discussion. I think I've prolonged that which I was supposed to not to prolong, which is the brief introduction about Ramadan. But sometimes time just flies away, and we all know that one of the signs of the hour is what? Time passing quickly. I did not notice it. I thought it was still about ten minutes uh, past... Uh, uh, nine. Tabarakallah. Allahumma sta'an. So one of the signs of the hour is that time passes quickly. And we actually witness it tonight. Subhanallah. So now I'll leave it to you guys. You are allowed to entertain us with any questions that you want. Only referring back to Ramadan. No questions about any other issue but Ramadan. Fatafaddalu. Barakallahu fina wa fikum insha'Allah. When is Ramadan? Allah Ta'ala A'lam, I have a Sunday or Monday. When the crescent is uh, viewed, inshallah, we can inshallah judge then. If not, we continue Shaban 30 days, and thus Ramadan will be as normal on its first day. You're going to see these controversial topics now. Ramadan, inshallah, will be exposed to you guys when it is. Inshallah, don't you have to worry about that. Don't go and buy telescopes and any other equipment. Inshallah, ask the people of knowledge and you'll be safe, inshallah. Naam, ya Abdul Rahman. Salaam to Allah. If a person is engaging, engaged in holy war on the battlefield, is he obliged to fast in Ramadan on that particular way? It is better if he does not fast. It is better if he does not fast because we all know that when you fight, you're going to lose a lot of energy. Correct? You need the energy to confront the enemy with. So it is better and more advised that you strengthen yourself and you do not fast. And this is witnessed in many narrations where many battles occurred in Islam and the companions or their pious predecessors, our pious predecessors did not fight in holy battles. However, you are allowed. You are allowed. As a companion said to Muhammad Sallam, can I fast? He said, yes, fast if you want to and break your fast if you want to. Now, I'm out there. Yes, a person must make up the days that he missed. Who makes up the days? Let us, a question can be asked. When does a person have to make up the fast? Who makes up the fast? Number one, those who make up the fast are a lady who's in her menses and postnatal bleeding. She has to make up her day. Number two, a sick person. Number three, a traveller. 
they are allowed, these three are allowed to make up the fast. Who are allowed to pay an expiation, a ransom? And a ransom is feeding a poor person per day. One poor person for each day you miss. So who are these? Uh, who, are they? who are they? Number one, the elderly, the frail elderly, we can say, the men or women who are unable to fast due to their age. Number two, the breastfeeding or conceived lady, pregnant lady. She likewise only has to feed a poor person for each day that she misses. Is there anyone else? Yes, the person who is fighting for the cause of Allah must make up that day on a later date. A person, I just mentioned, oh, a person, very good question, Yazad. A person who has continuous sickness, who is unable to fast, whether in Ramadan or after Ramadan, he falls under the category of the elderly, where he has to pay for each day or feed for each day an elderly person. Um, if a person is going to get his wisdom tooth pulled out during Ramadan, he's going to have anesthetic. He's allowed to break his fast and fast at a later date, inshallah. It's actually advised. No. What is the ransom? What is the expiation, Ya Esther Zunaid? The expiation is uh, half a saw. Half a saw, which is equivalent to approximately a kilo or a kilo and a half, some scholars have said. However, to put it in an uh, understanding manner, it's to feed a poor person one meal for every day. Anas ibn Malik, when he, begot, when he got old, he could not fast, so he gathered 30 poor people over a banquet, over a large meal for the 30 days he missed in Ramadan. So he only fed, fed them for uh, that one time, and which expiated with an atonement for the whole month of Ramadan for him. One meal that covered 30 poor people, and that was his expiation, and that sufficed his uh, problem. Naam ya Marwan. There are many poor people. You go to the people of knowledge or people of, uh, who collect charity or funds for the needy and thus, inshallah, you will find them. Now, I'm going Zakat al-Futr, very good question, must be paid in commodity. It cannot be paid in money. In other words, a problem has occurred in our time where many people pay it in money. They send money overseas, whether to, to, it's to Africa, the subcontinental, or to the Middle East or the Arab countries, they pay their zakat uh, al-futr in money. This is not acceptable. It's got to be exchanged for food. You are not allowed to pay the zakat al-futr, which is three saw, three saw, approximately you can say around the, just over three kilos, of anything that is common in that town, whether it's wheat, rice, sugar, dates, barley and so forth, that must be paid in uh, commodity and not in money. Are you allowed to brush your teeth when you are fasting or use Listerine? Yes, you are, as long as you do not drink the water or the Listerine or the toothpaste when you're brushing or using these issues, these uh, things. There is no problem with that. As Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to use the siwak, and the siwak is a stick that you can derive from it some kind of liquid that purifies the mouth. So uh, that was used by him throughout the days of Ramadan and he actually encouraged this. He actually encouraged this. Likewise, the companions عنهم, used to use the siwak and thus they likewise encouraged it. So you are allowed to use the siwak. So an analogy can be formed on that, which is the toothpaste with the toothbrush. There is no difference, just as you are allowed to rinse your mouth, you are allowed to rinse your mouth when you are uh, warm, when you are hot, to cool yourself down, as you are allowed to submerge in water, put your head in water, when you are likewise warm, you are allowed to use the toothpaste and the siwak. <laughs>